welcome to my YouTube channel where I share with you my journey towards data science. Hi everyone, my name is Idalia and uh, welcome to my channel Nursey. Uh, where I share with you my pathway towards data science, but also I educate nurses and with the fellow citizens here uh, like you uh, on how to demystify some um, health uh, trends and education and many other things that you might need throughout your life. Uh, so today I'm going to share with you, as you know, I'm doing a data science course. Uh, today is the we are in the beginning of March 2023 and I've always wanted to learn data science so when this bootcamp came up I was very willing to do it um, and this week was the most challenged week of all we have two projects to present uh, one in supervised and one unsupervised learning so the project that I'm going to share with you today is the supervised model because I was not really effective with the unsupervised the results were not that great uh, but I want to share with you uh, so you can see whether this project actually did any, had any results or not. So is my model an AI model a fraud or does my AI model is able really to predict uh, fraud transactions? I want you to see and uh, keep stay, stay with us and I'm going to share with you my presentations that I've done this week. And I hope that you also learn something from it. And I'm going to mention failure. Yes, I'm going to mention failure because not all the projects have success. So I want to share with you also some failures along the way. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Hi, everyone. So as promised, here I am to share with you my presentation about is my AI model a fraud or can we truly predict fraudulent transactions? So here we go. Uh, so, you know, as always, problem, time, solution, get and explore data, prepare data, AI models. Uh, I did some logistic regression. I tried it as well. Neural networks and I tried others uh, that I didn't share here because they're not very effective. Uh, even though maybe perhaps you'll have a surprise at the end of the day. And this was probably, yes, very effective or not very effective. So as we know, 40% of the organizations really experienced fraudulent fraud in the past 24 months. And we know that, and it's important to pick up those uh, fraud transactions in order to reduce um, all the, the, the transactions that, uh, you know, lose money uh, to everyone. So how can we, can we really predict transactions? So first of all, we did some basic descriptive statistics, and then we did some logistic regression, and then we applied the neural networks. So initially we uh, extract and explored the, our data, and we could see that, um, uh, you know, we just imported uh, the libraries as we got along. We got our data and then we checked the size and type of the data. I was really surprised to be given a data set that is so huge. I think it's the first data set that really has a lot of, um, a lot of uh, data. Uh, and that was really, really challenging. I think it was more than millions, millions of, um, you know, transactions. So then... We looked at whether if there were new values or missing data, we didn't have any new values, but in reality, <laughs> data sets are not like that. I think it's just the data set from Kaggle that we really didn't have any, uh, any missing values. So, you know, hey ho. Uh, and then we could find, I was trying to find, oh, well, can I really maybe separate categories to then find a way of uh, looking into the data set. The data set didn't really had variables that I would consider that would allow me to predict fraud in a good way. Um, but as you can see, there was just too many categories. For example, on the name origin, it would so many uh, really, and as well on the name desk. So there were loads, loads, loads. And the other thing that I really had problems here was kind of disable exponential numbers. For some reason, my data set was pushing me everything in exponential numbers, and I was just getting very frustrated with that. But uh, I was trying different kind of um, libraries, such as Matplot and many others, but I was not really effective on that. And you can see here, terrible insights because of that. And that was challenging to me. I try, as I said, try different types of libraries, didn't work out very well. I tried my plot, I tried Seaport, and I tried another one that I don't remember the name, <laughs> and uh, it didn't work out. So I could see that, you know, this uh, is, uh, is going to start not uh, being very easy. 
Then the only thing I managed to do was kind of a pie chart. Um, and you can see that cash out is the most common transaction. Uh, I really wanted more insights. I think this is very basic insights and it doesn't really tell you what I wanted to tell me. But I found it really difficult to do any types of other uh, charts. I think it's because the data was very unbalanced and also there were too many categories and obviously I would have to do a lot of pre-processing that I didn't have time for <laughs> uh, because I didn't plan my time very well um, and I didn't have time. This is the project, you know, for literally two days. Um, to, to try and do small categories of uh, maybe in, instead of 700, for example, like this by steps, maybe we could have categories by 100, less than 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 300 and so on, uh, because this doesn't tell you anything. But yeah, here we go. I try to do some more interesting charts, but not really interesting. And then the trouble continue really. <laughs> You know, it's really clear that the data was not, uh, was very unbalanced. And obviously that is a problem because if the data is imbalanced, and this is the first time that I came up with this issue, uh, then it's going to be difficult for you to get any model, anything and for the model to learn. And you can see here, fraud was like literally almost no, no transactions that were fraud. And I think we're about, I don't remember, but. 2000 or one, I don't know, very, very small amount. I remember I saw the Excel and I was like, oh, this is going to be a problem. And, you know, this is my first data set with millions and millions of data, data, very unbalanced data. So I did not know that unbalance would be a problem. And then I tried to do some correlations. Well, good luck. Uh, not really. Uh, um, I didn't find anything interesting. Maybe perhaps because I had such an imbalanced state, it was difficult to find anything that would work. And then uh, I was trying to figure out, well, is there any variable that could help us predict? I went online and checked, you know, which variables are more common that tell us that I'll be fraudulent. They said, you know, high amounts of money, um, you know, all those kind of things. Maybe perhaps if it was today and I had more time, I was probably uh, break uh, those variables to different small categories so then it would allow us to do that much more interesting give us much more interesting insights as well uh, but what I decided to do uh, because I didn't have time was to remove drop columns such as the ones that I had here the reason why I first dropped the new balance origin and then I put it back um, was because I realized when I looked back to the Excel Although this might be a bias, right? Uh, sometimes we ourselves are biased and we don't realize. It looked like this variable, every time that had fraud, it was zero on the new balance. So I thought maybe perhaps that's a variable that would help. And then, well, I wanted to understand a little bit more my data. So I did some Shapiro Wilk tests to evaluate if the data had normal or non-normal distribution. And here I said that almost anyone not likely to be normal distributed and then i did some uh, um i was trying to follow my book that i have here no i don't have here <laughs> oh it's here so let me just show you so what i did is i uh you can't see because my camera is a bit whoop. but anyway um this book really helped me because i just followed their um their checklist on how to do a project from scratch, but obviously, you know, it's quite complicated still. Um, but uh, I've learned that I could do some ordinal encoding for converting categorical variables to numerical variables. So I did do that for a few uh, variables and this is what I've got in the end. And then I did some future scaling uh, where I just uh, basically improve the scale uh, so it doesn't get too many variants, uh, variable. Um, and then we using a mix max scaler, but I was not sure if I needed to normalize data, which was already encoded before. I think at the end I removed that, but initially I have done it, but then it was a mess. <laughs> So, you know, these pre-processing skills are quite difficult yet to understand for me and I'm trying to figure out how to do it properly uh, because that's going to be very important to then create your models well. So initially I did some logistic regression. Um, these were my variables. I had fantastic results, you'll see. <laughs> Nothing predict. everything was predicted as no fraud. 
this was the uh, confusion matrix, as you can see. Well, I'm not predicting anything because nothing is predicted as fraud. Well, not fantastic results. It was actually terrible. Uh, and then I did try some neural networks. So initially I converted again. Um, don't ask me why, uh, but I thought that I had to kind of convert the ones that are flowed into intergens. And this was kind of a back and forth to understand, you know, can I, am I doing the pro pre-processing properly, not properly. So I have to go back and forth in some of the things that I've done pre-processing because actually I didn't do it correctly. Um, and then I spent a few hours here because <laughs> I was not getting the units right, the input right. Um, you know, I had to go back and forth, but that's what I've done in, in, in the end. And, you know, I had incredible results. Look at this accuracy of 0 0.99 and value accuracy of 0 0.999. This is great, isn't it? You know, accuracy of one, you know, this is great. No, it's, it's, it's wrong. Look at my rock curve. Look at my train and validation. You don't learn anything. So, you know, in the end, our fraud model needs really some serious help. Um, so I thought, so I presented until here, um, um, but because I had some time or I felt like, well, I could do something else, I gave him a little bit of makeover to see if I could stop those fraudulent, you know, if I could really stop uh, and detect those uh, fraudulent transactions like a pro. Um, so what I did was to apply SMOD, synthetic minority over sample technique, um, to try and balance the data let me show you um, um but i was not very effective anyway but basically what it does instead of creating samples um balancing the data by creating more copying or um, reproducing the same samples like a fraud that you have the same transactions that are considered fraud what this model does is that it picks the last point as far as i understand pixelized points and creates a new variable, which is fraud transaction. So it doesn't copy the same one, it just picks the last one and tries to create a new one. So I thought perhaps this model, based on the articles that I read online, was more efficient. But I do think that I didn't apply it correctly. So um, this is what I've done. I just followed some uh, guidance online. Um, to be honest, I don't think it worked. <laughs> I think I probably didn't do it very well, or it can also perhaps because I didn't had time had time to adjust all the layouts and all the parameters that might have been giving me more results. But these results are terrible anyway, as you can see. <laughs> so what would I do differently if uh, I had more time? So I think two projects this week were too much. I think doing two projects, complex projects in a week does not really allow us to critically reflect on the code itself, on the data sets, like I want to. So I can learn much better how does my code work, what is doing what, and what mistakes am I doing. Uh, I would really like to learn better how to prepare the data. So the pre-processing, how do I make sure that this pre-processing stage is done effectively? I think, for example, as we can see here on big data sets like this one, which is the biggest one that I had so far, if I done pre-processing very well, I probably would have much better results than I had and not, you know, results that don't tell me anything. I think now it's only that I'm starting to understand how different models require different types of structures. I, I think I, I know it sounds silly, but I really didn't understood that in the beginning. Um, I think maybe perhaps I didn't, and now it makes more sense. And, you know, under sampling and balanced data. So if I had more time, obviously I've applied that now, but, uh, you know, uh, it's still not effective. But I had a colleague of mine that did that. Uh, we, not with the model, not with the type of technique that I've done, but basically just creating copies of the fraud to balance the data set. Uh, but he also, although it was great, he had some good results, but he had overall... Um, what did he had? <laughs> he had some uh, over... Overfitting, gosh, overfitting of the of the data sets. So yeah, um, difficult. So I just want to say that AI models that fail are not failures of technology, but rather are an opportunity for us to learn and improve upon them. It's through these failures that we can fine tune our AI models to predict even better than before. So uh, thank you for listening. 
if you know you know you can check my code on github or on kaggle uh it's not great um but i would appreciate some feedback and if you are really um pro in data science feel free to comment and and really show to me where i could be you know what i could have done better i really appreciate some feedback and i hope you enjoyed this session and uh, see you next time <laughs>